white wine or water. Pretty much all the time, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, it's vegetable broth or stock or water. So, or sometimes vegetable broth with water. So, and I'll tell you a little bit about that here in just a second. So we are gonna be making tavern burgers, um, uh, veggie burgers today, and they're really good. So if you're kind of seeing a little bit that's on the, that's in front of me, there's like carrots and zucchini and there's barley and brown rice and mushrooms. So really good, like, you know, a, a burger and stuff that has the starches in it, but it also has all the veggies. And so it's, it's a really good hearty burger. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that, um, that you could make it. So, cause I have a, a little, like a hamburger press and then also one where you just do it kind of at a round and you can make them like really thick. So I'll show you both of those. And then we're gonna do barbecue beans. This is probably one of my favorite recipes for barbecue beans. And it makes, it makes quite a bit. So, you know, if you're going to like a, a different party or something like that, it's, it's a really good place to, you know, it's a good place to take barbecue beans and they're completely plant-based, which is really good. And I like, like I said, I love them good. And then they're also good if you put the barbecue baked beans on top of the tavern burger too. Guarantee those are good. Okay. So let me go before I get started. I'm gonna have Jerry introduce himself and I'll kind of watch over here just to, so that if anybody needs to, to get in, but I'll have him introduce himself and then we'll get going. Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Jerry Posados. If you don't know who I am for the first timers plant-based nutritionist. Uh, I have my own private practice. And I am a certified instructor for Dr. McDougall Start Solution Program, which he's been doing for almost 50 years now. And uh, obviously he's been around as a pioneer in the industry of the plant-based world. But I'm just here to eat the food and, and run the camera. If you have any questions about nutrition, I'd be glad to ask. We've been plant-based now 15 years. I did it for health reasons of my own, heart disease, and developing all kinds of medications to hold completely off now and uh, 35 pounds lighter and I'm doing well. So anyway, just here to help and uh, any questions, be sure to, and our information is in the chat window if you have any. And I go to the websites and I get uh, consultations and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, just enjoy the, the food. It's a great burger, by the way. It's one of my favorites. So. Check, if you can check the sound, said hard to hear. Might be oh. you. <laughs> Might be you. <laughs> Might be the microphone. Okay, so if you just want to check the sound over there. You can, can you guys, a thumbs up, you can hear me, Mona, Matthew, everybody can hear me well. No, nope, Mona, you can't. You were having problems last time. Okay, can, everybody else seems to be able to hear me. Okay, let me put the sound up real quick. All right, so, all right, so we're going to get started with the burgers first. So we're going to do some sauteing, and then I'll kind of get the barbecue beans going just because we want to be able to get the burgers in the oven. So that's always an important thing. So what we're gonna do is we've got mushrooms. So regular, just, you know, baby Bella, you can do the, you know, the white, you can do whatever you want as far as like whatever's on sale. It doesn't matter what kind of mushrooms that you do. They all have a little bit different flavors, but in the burgers, it's all good. So I'm gonna put those in there. Um, when they first start, you're gonna wanna probably add just a little bit of moisture, but don't add a lot when you're sauteing with mushrooms because they put out a lot of moisture. And so that's one of the things that you'll end up with soppy mushrooms, or you'll have to sit there and kind of saute them and keep sauteing them until you actually um, get, the, get the, the, um, the liquid out. So you can start out with just a little bit, just to kind of get them started, but don't add, be nice if I open this, um, don't add a lot just because like I said, it'll get really mushy. You can always drain it. We'll get those going. And then I'm gonna get the, the pan and set up a little bit just for the beans, because we'll get, because we're gonna have to saute out. So what did I, I was like, what did I just do my pan? There we go. I moved it because I thought, oh, you know, that'd be, it'd be more convenient to have it over there and then you forget where you put it. So it happens to all of us. So just a big stock pot. This is about the size. Um, you can go probably half the size of this for the beans, but this is usually like one of the sizes I have. So when we first get started on the baked beans, because we're gonna, once these get going, then we're gonna take those off and start making the burgers. And then after that, then we can just put the saute pan on and we can start doing the beans, which are really good. Okay, just gonna let those sit. All right, so if you're following along, so we're gonna do garlic and onion. So I'm gonna grab, I'll grab it from over here because I have it, just another tray made up. So I've got regular just minced garlic. Just put that in there. Grab a little spoon. So it says my mic's not loud enough. I'm gonna move it up even. Yes. Okay, can we hear me okay now? Yeah. Better? Yes. 
I can talk really loud too. Mm -hmm. Let me check, make sure mic's on, it's on. Okay, so garlic and then onions. And these are just regular diced. You can use red onions, white onions, yellow onions, whatever onions that you have. It really does not matter. Just whatever you have in the fridge or whatever you can get in the stores. There's been times where in like our stores here in Colorado, we can find red onions and you can't find the white onions or the yellow onions, or you can find the, you know, like, like the white onions, but you can't find the red onions. So there's been all kinds of different things that they're in the stores just because of supply chain and everything else going on. Much better. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry about that. I could talk even louder, but <laughs> everybody would be like, turn the volume down. Let's keep those going. All right, so we've got the onions and the garlic in there, so we're going to get that going. And then we're going to add the green peppers and the um, jalapeno. So this one, so the barbecue beans have a jalapeno in them. You could do like a poblano or you could do something that's, you know, just even more. Um, like fragrance, fragrance and, and if you wanted to, or you can completely keep the jalapeno out. So I'm actually adding in this recipe a whole jalapeno, um, just because we like tend we tend to like things that are spicy here, and it just makes, especially like when you've got the sweet in those baked beans, it gives you that little bit of kick of the hot and a little bit of kick of the of the sweet, which is really nice. So it won't take too long with the mushrooms. I'll show you when they when they're starting to cook down. So you can see they're starting to cook down. There's some moisture, but that's also because of the vegetable broth. So it's not going to take too long to, to actually get the moisture out. You want those mushrooms, and especially even the vegetables and all those kind of things, more on the dry side, because otherwise you're going to have to keep adding a lot more panko breadcrumbs and things like that to, to make it where it's going to hold up as a burger. You can also freeze these. So when we get, you know, we get to the point where I make some, uh, I won't make all of them, and then tonight and stuff, I'll. I'll probably um, put them in the round and I'll show you the round way that I do it and then I'll freeze them up. And then Jerry, you know, we'll put them in the freezer and he can eat them as much as he wants and he's got all kinds of other burgers in there. So usually I keep probably for him because he'll eat them for lunch and, you know, heat up some fries or those type of things. He'll, he'll probably have one or two a week. So I'll usually make like 24 to 30 and keep them frozen in the, the, the freezer. So this will be nice. So this will give him a, like an extra flavor so he can try just something a little bit different. Right, just let that go for a minute or two. So one thing that's really interesting about the burgers, because like I said, it's got it's got a lot of starches in it, and I'm just gonna put this back here for right now because we'll saute that up in a second. But it's got you know it's got barley in it. But you could substitute out and say, let's just say you don't like barley and you're looking for something like maybe like quinoa or um, like millet or anything like that. You can put all kinds of different grains in there. And you could also use, you could also leave the barley out if you wanted to. So, because it does have brown rice, so you've got that brown rice and you've got the panko and you've got the mashed potatoes, which I'll show you here in a second. So there's quite a bit of starch in it already, but it's still nice to have, you know, especially like if you put like a quinoa or a millet or something, or even the barley, because the barley tends to have a little bite to it. It makes it just a little chewier, like a, a burger, and it's really good. So um, there's different ways, you know, you could, you could mess this up and you could say, you know, mix it up and say, all right, I don't want carrots this time because like, eh, carrots, you know, don't do it for me. But you could do like the zucchini, you could add some eggplant, you could add some, you know, squash. You know, you could take the corn and the, the peas out and add some other couple of vegetables. I mean, there's anything and everything that you can add to these. And it just makes it, the more vegetables you have, the better it tastes. Like I said, Jerry said it's one of his favorites, and it is. It's like he likes this one and he likes this Mexican burger that I make that has uh, peppers and things in it. And then he also likes the one that I make for thanks. It's like a Thanksgiving burger. So it has like a cranberry sauce on it and it almost tastes like you're eating Thanksgiving, which is really nice. We'll do that one when it gets closer to the holidays, but that's a really good burger. Just let it keep going a little bit. Yes. So prior, so the zucchini, it, de it really depends. So the zucchini, like when I did, so I shredded it, you know, just on a regular grater, and I did it last night, and you'll, you'll notice and stuff, and I'll turn it like this, there's no moisture to it. So it really depends on the zucchini that you get. So sometimes, like even cucumbers, they'll say, you know, take all the seeds out, and you'll find some that don't have a lot of seeds. This one, because it's been sitting since last night, you would think there'd be a lot of liquid in the bottom. There's not. But if you do get one that has a lot of moisture to it, 
um, and it is a good zucchini, then just, you know, just take it in your hands and just squeeze it over the sink. But make sure like the carrots, the, the zucchini, any of the vegetables that you have, make sure that you have all the moisture out because the less moisture you have, the more it's going to stick together. So great question on that. But yeah, this one did not. It's, and, it, and Jerry just bought it yesterday. Um, so there is not, there was not any moisture in it, which I was really surprised. Okay. So there's the mushrooms all ready to go, all the moisture's out of them. So we'll just set these to the side here a second when we need it, and then I'm gonna saute, get the sauteing going for the beans. Because the longer they, they actually, the longer they simmer, the better they taste. And like the next, it's kind of almost like a chili with the baked beans, the next day, even better. Start that up, okay. All right, so if we're following along with the, with the recipes, so I did, I've already cooked the mushrooms, so I just did that here. I've already cooked the barley, um, and you can get, there's like different types, there's like pearl barley, barley, um, but like I said, if you don't care for barley or don't wanna have to go buy, you know, a whole pack of, of Bob's Red Mill, use whatever you have. Use quinoa, millet, um, all those type of things. I actually just made a um, granola with millet, and I'll show it to you here. And you can tell. It's a big jar, it's the jar I had, but this was made with millet and it's got like different seeds and, and um, dates and figs and pumpkin seeds, but the millet and stuff was just in the oven baked and it just, it, it's like, it's almost like eating, um, I'm trying to think, like a, a rice crispy or something, so it's got that crunch to it, but you don't have to cook the millet, which is really nice. So this is one of the recipes that we can always make one of these times, but um, it's really good to just eat and just have as a snack, but it's also really good to eat like as a cereal or put it on top of cereal or, you know, the plant-based yogurt or whatever else that you're looking for. Okay, so I, like I said, I've done everything. I did the mashed potatoes too because they need to be able to cool. So all I did is just cook the mashed potatoes, of course, in water, and then I just mashed them up using a potato masher, like something like, like this. You can use your hands also. So I just used that. And then I added the flax seed. So the flax seed is like, it's like a binder. So it's almost like a, it's a, so flax seed is the egg for plant-based. Um, so you can do flax seed. You can also do, there's like an energy egg that you can use. I like the flax seed because it kind of adds a little bit of nutty flavor, but it's also, it's, and you don't have to really go buy anything else because you can use flax seed on your cereal. You can use it in smoothies. You know, it's pretty much uh, universal. So I gave you the recipe for the flax seed um, for that. So you just do one tablespoon of the flax ground, so make sure it's ground, and two tablespoons of water. Let it set. It's going to look real runny at first, but let it set for about, you know, three to five minutes, and then it just gets really thick, like an egg consistency, and that just gives you your binder. So it's a really nice way to be able to do that. Jerry grinds up flax seed probably, I don't know, once, twice a week, uses it on all this cereal and stuff, so there's always, we always have the ground flax seed. Okay, so we got the potatoes in here. So I've got there, so in a large bowl, that there, that off to the side. So in a large bowl, I'm gonna add the vegetables. So the, the cool thing about this is that you don't have to worry so much about, you know, like how am I gonna get all the vegetables cooked or do anything ahead of time. You could actually buy pretty much all of these things that are here. You could buy your shredded carrots already. Um, zucchini, usually don't see zucchini too much that's shredded, but that's, you know, pretty quick to be able to do that. But then like your corn, your peas, it's frozen, your red bell peppers, pretty much all cut up, ready to go, which is really nice. So you could make this recipe like super simple. Just bought a bag of already ground, um, don't have anything to grind it in. Ah, yeah, so yeah, so as far as like the, um, you're talking about the, uh, the flax seed, sounds like? Already ground, don't have anything to grind it in. Yeah, you can buy it, you, so you don't have to grind it. Jerry uses my old coffee grinder which I never drink, I never drink coffee, but it was a good thing to, to grind in, and it does a really good job with spices and that, but yeah, you can buy just the ground flax seed, it's great. But Jerry, yeah, Jerry, he was, he was with um, Jean-Pierre, JP, I'm sure you guys probably, a lot of you guys probably know Jean-Pierre, he does like, he does a lot of like exercises, but he's really good about plant-based. He talks about that it's when you grind the seeds, you even get more health benefits from them. So Jerry's been grinding the seeds for a couple years, but before, he used to always just use the ground. Okay, so let's add the veggies. So we've got carrots, so shredded up carrots. Just make sure there's no moisture. Yep, so I had put water in it to keep them fresh from last night, so 
Those are ready to go. Good way to use up your carrots. All right, and then we've got, so then we've got zucchini. No moisture in that, so I'm good. I'll just dump that. And I left the, I left the skin on because uh, Jerry bought an organic one at the store, so we were good, so we just left it on. You can take the skin off, peel it off, you can keep it on, doesn't matter. And look at that already. Look at the greens and the yellows and the oranges without even adding anything else. It's how pretty. That down. All right, so the onions are done. So onions, when they're done, they're translucent. So you know that they're, they're ready to go. Now make sure. So when we talked about, we were doing that, so we're gonna do the green bell pepper. I don't, we don't use a lot of green bell pepper here at home, um, but this is this recipe, you know, I thought, well, I'll switch out, maybe I'll put yellow or red or orange. Um, but the green bell pepper in the, in the uh, barbecue baked beans, really good. So we're gonna add that in there. Make sure I get all that, all the goodies. All right, and then the jalapeno. So we just wanna saute that till soft. So when you do a jalapeno, the, of course all the heat is in, is in the actual, like the white part. So it's kinda of like the vein area, not so much the seeds. So if you don't want them to be really hot, you definitely wanna peel all that out. Just take a spoon and scrape it out and then chop up your jalapeno. But if you don't want heat at all, none, don't put a jalapeno in. We like it just a little bit of the heat, which is really good. If you need more moisture, this is where you could add a little bit more of your veggie broth um, or water. You don't have to do vegetable broth. So even if I say like a, you know, like a teaspoon or tablespoon of uh, vegetable broth and you don't have it, there's times when I've gone into the pantry and I'm like, I forgot to buy some, then just use water, you're fine. But definitely when you're making the, the sauce with this and it says like you need the two cups of vegetable broth, you're gonna wanna add vegetable broth for that. But for sauteing, water's just fine. But it, what I was talking about earlier too, I was, gonna, I was gonna mention is when you're doing the vegetable broth, it's not like oil. So oil, you know, you could saute onions for a long time, fry things up, you know, as long as you have it on a low heat, it can go for a long time. You can walk away, do some laundry, you know, whatever you need to do. Vegetable broth will burn off really quick. So you'll get things that'll stick to your pan and almost start to burn. So one way to kind of counterbalance that a little bit is if it says like a couple tablespoons of vegetable broth, add like one tablespoon of vegetable broth and then one tablespoon of water. And then the water helps and stuff keep that vegetable broth in your, in the, for the sauteing and stuff a lot longer. So that's a good way to do that. Okay, just let that saute. Just add a little more vegetable broth. That way when I'm talking and things like that, it doesn't start sticking, so more for my use. All right, so we've got that in there. So we've got peas, some more green. These were just frozen. You can use canned, you can use frozen, you could use, you know, if you've, if you've got like, like sometimes they'll sell like the, like in markets and stuff like fresh peas, you could use that too. Just watch the moisture, just like you do everything else. Corn, frozen corn, or what would be really good right now is they've got all the corn on the cob that's really good. So you could actually, if you wanted to, you could put the corn on the cob in the oven, like 350, and then just kind of roll it a little bit, you know, on a pan or something that, like that, or even the, just the metal parts. And you can actually, the metal shelves and stuff, and you can actually roast it and then let it cool a little bit and then chop it down. That would be really good. But look at that already, just without, I haven't even added the red, but just the pretty colors. I mean, that looks great. Okay, then we've got red bell pepper. You, if you don't have red, yellow, green, um, orange, any of those colors, or you could use those little sweet, um, I know a lot of people buy the little sweet um, bell peppers, that uh, the little mini ones and stuff that are in the stores right now, you could chop those up and use those too. You could also use like roasted red bell peppers or green or any of those. So if you roast them out, and a lot of times if you go to the places that um, they roast like the, the green chilies and stuff, especially here in Colorado, you can get red bell peppers roasted and they are wonderful. They'll do that for you. But like, just like that, and that, that's beautiful. Colors, that's what's gonna be in the burger. All right, stir. Okay, so you're just wanting to get the, the, the green, so the, basically the green pepper and the jalapeno. So it's just kind of where it gets a little bit soft, but it's also gonna simmer for a little bit, so you don't need to get it where it's like 
100% soft because you're going to put everything else in there. So I'm going to turn that down while we're cooking. That is so pretty. That's almost like putting maybe like put some arugula and some dressing or some spinach or something like that and just have, that'd be a great salad. Or even make it like a little bit of like red cabbage and green cabbage and do a coleslaw. That would be good. Very pretty. Okay, then you've got, so we're adding everything in. So then we've got the, the scallions, so we've got those in. So the green parts, I used just a little bit of the white parts for a little bit of the onion. And then I saved some of the green because we're going to put that on top of the, um, the beans when they come out. Okay, and then we're going to add all the rest of the ingredients. So I've got my barley. Nice little, like I said, a little bit of a chew with barley. You can cook it for a long time. It's still going to give you that little bit of chewy, but nice with burgers. Brown rice. Push that up. I won't add the panko just yet because I need to get this into the, I need to get the mashed potatoes in. So as you can see, it makes a big bowl. So if you don't want this many burgers, um, and that's, you know, you could definitely, I would say, even though it says four to six servings, you could probably get, depending on the size of burgers you make, you could probably get eight. If you don't want that many, then cut the recipe in half. Okay, mashed potatoes. There we go. They're probably more room temperature now versus cold, but that's fine. This is actually, this is where I'm going to get gloves because it's going to be easier. All right, then we've got garlic, roasted garlic, because you want that, or actually just minced garlic, because you want the garlic. A little bit, so you've got cornstarch, tapioca starch, potato starch, so you just want a little bit of the starch, so it's going to just give you that binder along with the flax seed, so it just holds it together just a little bit more. And then I'm going to hold off on the panko for just a minute, because I want to get in there. This is the fun part. When you get to, to kind of mush things together, and this is also where you could add, so it's a really good, like I said, the burger's a really good flavor as it is already. Um, you could add all the salt and peppers and, and all those kind of things, but you could actually add, um, and we're gonna put it on top, but you could add some barbecue sauce. So like Amy's barbecue sauce, they have some smoky ones. You could add some, um, what am I trying to say, um, sun-dried tomatoes. We've done, I've done like different flavors. I've done some like, you know, cooked kind of green beans, all kinds of different things, just to, just to make it different. You still have the same base that you've got here, but you're adding a little bit different flavors. So you could do like some fresh tomatoes, which would be really good. Kind of get in there, so because you want the mashed potatoes, the flaxseed, everything else to really mix in. Get it all coated. You know, it's like a salad and stuff. All the goodies go to the bottom. So you always have to kind of just keep flipping it a little bit. Mix it up together. Okay. So that's already looking just like a burger. And I have spilled it everywhere. Okay. Panko breadcrumbs. I'll do part of them yet. You can always add more. And we always talk about like spices. So when I get ready to do the, the barbecue beans, because it has a few more of the spices in it, you always want to start, even with my recipes, I always talk about start low. So if I say a teaspoon of something, try like an eighth of a teaspoon first, and then, you know, mark your recipes and say, oh, I don't like, you know, I don't want so much chipotle powder or something like that, or cayenne or, or that, or pepper, um, and then come back and always add, because you can always add more spices, but you can't take away. And that's what we've seen with a lot of recipes that, that people try, especially like if, you know, you're trying them on Pinterest or any of those places, a lot of people are like, I've tried it and I end up throwing it away because it tastes yuck. So they, they put like too much oregano, some, you know, something like that, a spice that maybe you're not a, that you're not a big fan of, and then it just ruins the whole soup or, or burgers or whatever else that you're making. So I just put in the last of the panko. And when you're, if you're doing this at home, you're going to find and stuff that, you know, it's getting, starting to get really sticky and really thick, which is really nice. So I've got, I'm getting it everywhere. Just want to make sure I get the panko in. 
If you don't have panko and you have regular breadcrumbs, that'll work too. Or you can make your own. Okay, it looks like I got it all mixed up really well. So like right now, so if I just grab, and this is way too big of a burger, but let's just say I grabbed it up like that, it sticks really well. So it's gonna hold together really well. And they freeze really well too. All right, there we go. So like I said, I have burger mess everywhere. Take off the gloves. All right, let's grab. I'm gonna grab this, but I'm also, what I wanna do is I wanna get the beans because I want them to start simmering. So let's get the beans going. Pretty easy to do. So, white beans. So I prefer, when I'm doing baked beans, I prefer the Great Northern. The reason why is they're a little bit smaller. Um, so like there's the size of one versus the cannellini. And a lot of times and stuff, I notice I just got panko breadcrumbs on the side of me. Um, I'll notice too that the cannellini beans will sometimes not soften up enough. And so I've one time made a whole bunch of um, baked beans and stuff and I used the cannellini because that's what I had on, on hand. And the beans were like almost like still crunchy. So I like cannellini white beans, but I, I prefer the Great Northern white beans in when I'm doing something like a barbecue baked beans. All right, so I'm just gonna add, so I got the cans. You can see I left the liquid in there, so I have the no salt, but I left the liquid because it just, it just adds to the flavor of everything. So I'm gonna dump those in. Then if I've got the, if things, I've got the green bell pepper, I've got the cloves, I've got the garlic cloves in there, I've got the jalapeno in there. So then I've got a quarter cup of molasses. So grandma's molasses, I think there's little bear molasses, all kinds. Molasses is really good. That's what you usually find like in your um, gingerbread cookies and there's, there's all kinds of different recipes you can use with molasses. I don't use a lot other than, and I keep it, but it keeps forever in your, your pantry. Um, but it's really good, especially if you have it around for like the Thanksgiving or holiday time. Molasses is really good because you can do like a gingerbread bread, which is, Wonderful, nothing better than like a gingerbread. All right, so we've got that in there. Then I've got a little bit of brown sugar, so you've got a little bit of the sweetness. I'm gonna add that in. If you don't wanna do brown sugar, you could do like date paste, or you could do um, like a monk fruit sweetener. You could actually, because of the molasses and some of the other stuff in there, you could actually say, yeah, I don't want any of the, the, like the sweetness and leave it completely out. All right, and then we've got yellow mustard. So just your regular, you know, bottle of, of yellow mustard, whatever you have. If, you know, you could, what you could do too is if you don't have like the yellow, like you go into the fridge and then you find out that your yellow mustard is empty, one of the other things that you could do, you could do like a Dijon or you could even do like a stone ground. So it's gonna give a little bit different flavor, but still really good. I mean, any mustard I think that's out there is really good. All right, and then you got apple cider vinegar. Get a little bit of that umami going. So you've got a little bit of the acid, a little bit of the sweet, a little bit of the, you know, kind of the hot, all those kind of things. So great umami. And then I've got, you'll notice and stuff that I'm not adding any um, salt and pepper. So every once in a while I'll add the pepper and I'll probably add that just a little bit. But um, salt and stuff, I always just, I don't cook with salt because Jerry's really sensitive to salt. But I, what I do is I just put it on the table. So if I decide I want some, I can have some. Chipotle, so chipotle chili powder. This is another one, it gives the smoke flavor. If you don't want, and it gives just a little bit of heat. If you don't want the heat, then what I would do is like a smoked paprika. And that would be one of the substitutions you can use. So it's gonna give you that little bit of a smoky flavor, which is wanting that baked beans, but not the heat. Cause I know a lot of people are like, ooh, I don't like that chipotle chili, but I like it just because it gives that really nice, um, like smoky flavor, which is really good. Okay, and then, don't forget, so tomato paste, I've actually started buying some of the tomato paste in these tubes. The reason why is a lot of times that these recipes that you do, and especially like, like unless you're gonna use it, you can also freeze tomato paste, that does work. But if you don't have a lot of freezer space, these are nice to have because you don't open up a six ounce can and only use a couple of tablespoons or a half a can and end up throwing it away. This is really nice. You kind of you just squirt out what you need and your shelf has a great shelf life. So just regular, there's all kinds of different brands out there that you can find. So. All right, so we've got tomato paste. So it's pretty much gonna be, whoops, the rest of this tube.
like I said, it's really nice to not have all that waste of, because I've, I've sometimes gotten rid of half a cans of tomato paste, and I hate doing that. And that's like, then nothing but recycling. A little tomato paste on the towel over here, so just rinse that off. You guys should smell this. Like, remember, I don't know if you remember ever watching Emeril Lagasse when he had his cooking show? He'd always be like, wow, I wish everybody, you know, we had smell a vision at home. Just adding the molasses and the tomato paste and just the onions and everything else smells so wonderful. It smells like a cookout. Let me just stir this up a little bit. Just get that tomato paste and I'll show you the color. You could also add other beans in here. So if you like, if you wanted to add um, like maybe like, like pinto beans or something like that, you could also add those in too. All right, let's get this out of here and I'm gonna show you the beans. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. Nothing better. You wanna, can you show it okay for me, Jer? I don't wanna tip it too much. See that nice color, isn't that beautiful? It's like a dark kind of mahogany type of a color but it's just all just full of flavor. So we'll just let that simmer. All right, let's get the burger. So I wanna show you a couple different ways to do burgers. What I didn't know, oh, you guys didn't catch me yet. I just turned around, mushrooms. Don't wanna leave those out after I cut them all up. If you don't like mushrooms, I know there is people that don't like mushrooms. I am not a mushroom fan as far as like if they're on salads or on pizzas or anything like that. I still, I mean, Jerry and I will go get a pizza, no cheese, you know, all the, all the ingredients and things like that on. They know us at a restaurant here in Colorado, Little Ricci, so they're always like, oh, here comes the guys that don't order cheese. Every once in a while we'll get like a waiter or waitress and they'll be like, no cheese? And we're like, nope, so explain it. But they will do, um, they do mushrooms. We always do mushrooms on the pizza but Jerry gets them. But on something like this, when it's mixed in, I'm okay. Like when I make it into a meatloaf or, or different things like that, I'm fine with it. As long as it's just not that, it's, I think a lot of it's consistency. And then they're a little, I'm not big on earthy things, like beets um, and those kind of things. So like, ugh. I was watching last night, um, so I don't know if you watch the cooking shows with um, uh, Gordon. What's his last name? Ramsey. Ramsey. Yeah. He's got a brain, brain, brain uh, slowness there. So Gordon Ramsey does all these cooking shows and he made, he's like, he's like before, probably about five years ago, he's like, oh my gosh, you guys are making vegan food. And now he's like, I am actually in love with vegan food. So he made a, um, he took like a beet, wrapped it up in a spinach crepe, and then wrapped it up in pastry. So it was, it, when he sliced it up, it looked just like, it was almost like a, a meat dish, but it was just this huge beet. And everybody was talking about the what? Beef, well, but it was a beet Wellington, yes. Okay, so it was all mixed in there. It looked beautiful, but I am not a beet fan. Turn that down a little bit. All right, get the other second pair of gloves off. Okay, so. I have rounds that I talked about. So a lot of times I'll make the burgers in rounds like this and you'll see they're probably about an inch or so and I can actually fill them almost all the way to the top and press them down and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, that's a fun way to do burgers. So if you want like thicker burgers, that's a great way. I also have this little burger press. So I've been making the, I made all the, um, the Mexican burgers for Jerry. I made them in this press. And it was like, this press was like I think $10 on on Amazon, the brand, just hamburger press patty is all it's called. And what you do is you get that, plus you, they end up giving you these little, um, these little paper things in between, which are really nice. Um, I have not, the only thing I've not, that I tell you that I can't find, is that, one of, that I find only the bigger ones now, the paper, so when I'm doing like a whole bunch of them together to freeze them, and I can't find the small ones. That's the only bad thing about the size that I bought here and I don't know if it says the size, it doesn't. But it does pretty good because you need the paper. So I'm gonna do, do two, sorry about the barking dog. She just tends, she's older. So she tends to think she hears things. 
Okay, so the press, of course, has the bottom that pulls out, has the top that's the press. Get Jerry to stop. Okay, so you just grab probably, I would say, three quarters of a cup is pretty good. Smush it together like that. I've got the paper on the bottom, like I showed you. I just put that in there like that. Put the paper on top. And then you just grab the little smasher and smash down. Then the bottom pops out, which is really nice. Might stick just a little bit. And then Keep your paper, because you can keep using it over and over, making a whole bunch of burgers. But look at that one. So that's in a, a burger, so it's a little bit thinner, but these, when, they're this, when you're using this little uh, hamburger press, they really freeze well, and they hold up. So even when you're, you're cooking them and things like that, they hold up on a burger, and they don't, like, sometimes when you get, like a, like, a veggie burger, and it just, like, falls all apart, these hold up really well when you make them. So I'm going to do a couple of those real quick. So put the bottom back on, put the paper back in, about three-quarters of a... Up. Put the ball in like that. Put the paper on top so it doesn't everything doesn't stick. Grab the little press. Press down. Give it a little wiggle. Don't have to. It's just fun. Pull out the bottom. And voila. Isn't that beautiful? All the peas and the corn. So that's one way. So I'm going to keep those because I'm going to make a whole bunch more of those a little later. The second way is the round. Or the third way is just do it by hand, make it into a patty, and go for it. I used to do that all the time, too. I just would grab and just with a patty. But a lot of, but then um, there are some companies that Jerry used to get the burgers with, and they, they actually stopped making them now. And so one of the things that I was doing was trying to get it to the exact same type of thickness and where it would hold up. So that burger press, the hamburger press, works really well. Okay, so just put it on your parchment paper. Got it in there. Yeah, I'll take some out. I got too much. It's about the same, about three quarter. And this is really sticky now. So it's got, you know, because you got your flax seed in there, everything else. So just press it down. And then just kind of push on it. Pull it out. So you have a really thick burger like that. Or you have the hamburger patty like that. So let me just do one more, and then we're going to get these in the oven. So about three quarters, so I would say still the same thing, about three quarters of a cup. And if you did the hamburger press, like I said, you could probably, with this recipe, I would say you're probably going to end up with maybe 15 burgers because you don't need as much. So that works really well. Make the recipe once, eat it many, many times. Just kind of press it down, make sure it's all around the circle. Do a little press like that, and voila, there's the burger. All right, I'm going to get these in so we can make the burgers. Don't those look pretty? Almost a little Christmassy because they've got all the red colors and everything else that's in them, but they are really, really good. All right, and these are nice too. Like I said, these I got I got these on Amazon. So these were you can there's all kinds of different kinds, but this was the Culinary Institute of America, and I'll use these a lot. I'll like if I need to make like a, a round mold on bread, you know, if I'm making something like little like little um, appetizer or something. So I use these a lot, and they wash up really well. I just hand wash them, and then I just keep them all in here. But there's you know you can make like little donut holes. There's all kinds, and it's I've had this set. I think it was like ten dollars, nine dollars. But I've had this set for probably 10 years now. It just holds up really well. Put that back there. All right. I'll taste the beans just a little bit. <clears throat> Nothing better, because I know you can buy you can buy like the canned um, baked beans, and there is a vegan one. 
but truthfully, nothing better when you make it homemade. This is one of those ones that, you know, just the beans in there, you could add, you know, you could actually use it as, like put it on, on like not mashed potatoes, but like baked potatoes, and you can put it on your burger. I mean, there's all kinds of things, but it has, it's like, there, like I said, there's just a little bit of heat because of the chipotle chili powder and a little bit of the, jal well, I, I, we put a whole jalapeno in there, so um, a little bit more than that, but it's got a little bit of sweetness in it, but it's almost like a, like a smoky kind of a caramel type of a flavor. Really good. It's one of the best for beans and stuff, one of the best sauces and stuff that I think is out there. And truthfully, Jerry prefers these versus, you know, we have bought the cans before because we're just like, you know, it's easy and it was on the shelf, so we tried it. But they're so salty um, that a lot of times and stuff, things that are in the can because they think that they need to salt everything up. And so there's, you know, it's really high sodium and things like that, which not as good. If you took these to a party, like, you know, well, it's already past 4th of July, but let's just say you've got like some kind of a family gathering or something going out. Um, you could, you know, you could take these. I guarantee you there would not be one left. People would, would definitely eat these. You can also freeze them. So when you're done, let's just say, you know, you make, you make this recipe and you're like, oh, okay, I'm done. I've had two servings of baked beans, three servings. And I like, you're like, I need to freeze them. So, you know, you could put it into a baggie and then just heat them like a baggie or like a, you know, if you have little jars or a little, you know, all the different things that you freeze things in the containers, you could freeze it up and then just thaw it out and then just heat them up again. So, you know, a couple weeks down the road when you're like, ooh, I'd like some baked beans again, you have some extras left over. It's a great way to do it. And there you can see just the burgers and stuff. There's quite a bit left and I made the four. So we got that going. So what questions do you Okay, so let's see, doesn't feel too weird to handle those with gloves, does it? Nope, no, the burgers and everything, I do, um, like if I, let's put this, okay, well, I'll be completely honest and transparent. If I'm home and it's something that, that Jerry and I are making, that's just, I just, you know, do it with my hands, wash my hands, don't worry about that, all those kind of things, and don't wear gloves. But when I'm doing it in front of a class, you know, a lot of people say they have latex allergies and things like that, then I always pull out the, the gloves just because I wanna make sure. Yeah. Can you freeze them after cooking? So the, you're asking the burgers or the beans? Which one? Or both? Burger. Yes. So I'll show you really quick. Let me grab, let me grab some other ones I made. So this has got a little bit messed up. Jerry must be a getting in the burgers, <laughs> messed them up. So this was, these were the, um, the, the Mexican burgers. So they're like a corn bean, um, barbecue sauce. There was goes, goes another moment where I had to think about what I was gonna say. Barbecue sauce, whole bunch of it in black beans and pinto beans. So there's the, and they get corn in them and things like that. These are the ones I made for them. I actually roasted them up. So I put them in the oven for 350 for probably about 15, 20 minutes. And so they hold up really well. And then I just kept the papers in between them so they just kind of hold together. But looks like I said, Jerry kind of threw them back in there so they're all kind of messed up. But um, these are, yeah, so these are already cooked and then you just freeze them. And then when you've got them ready, you can either throw them like on, if you want to, you know, they thaw out a little bit, you can throw them on a skillet if you want to, kind of brown both sides and then you're ready to go. You could do a microwave, you know, you can put them in a, a pan with just a little bit of moisture and they, you know, just teeny tiny bit of a moisture, put a lid on it, and then kind of almost steam it a little bit, or even put it back in the oven and just at a low temperature and heat them up that way too. So many different ways, but these are all cooked. And those that I'm making here for you guys to see tonight, same thing. If, I'm gonna, I, if I get done with it, because there's four burgers and we're only gonna eat two, I will put those, probably the small patties, I'll put those into the, um, the freezer. And Jerry will have them for whenever he's looking to have them. Throw these back. I'll fix them. I'll fix them when I'm getting ready to put the other burgers in there because they're all, like I said, they're all crazied up now a little bit. You could also, if you don't want to put the paper or buy the papers, um, the other thing you could do is you could put like one per baggie and then just, you know, and then take the, the ones that are wrapped in the baggie and then just slide them all into one great big Ziploc. That's another way to do it. I just, since I have the papers and I was making them up, I just put the papers in between. So kind of like the old days when, you know, when you back in the, back in when you go pick up like, um, 
bigger patties, they'd all have the paper in between. I'll turn this down because these are very good right now. I wish we had a way to transport things to you guys. Like here's a bite, here's a bite, samples, that type of thing. Because I guarantee you these baked beans, and you're, I'll show you the, like I said, they're kind of that reddish kind of mahogany color. They're just, they're like almost like decadent. Because they have all these great flavors in them, but they're like, like sweet, a little, little bit of smoky, a little bit of heat. All those good umami flavors that you want. All right, so I'm going to just do the bake. I'm going to go up a little bit. So what questions do you have? Things went a little faster than I thought they were going to. What was it? The burgers. So the burgers and stuff, they're usually, so it depends on how much you want them. So we're going to get them where they're toasty because we want, because everything pretty much in there other than you've got the raw vegetables, which are good for you because it's, you know, it's, it's all about eating the vegetables and they always say doing a lot of the raw vegetables, but everything like the rice is cooked, the barley is cooked, the potatoes are cooked. So, you know, you could get it to where like just what I made there. Um, and then you could actually put it in the microwave. You could put it on a, a pan, make sure it's just warmed all the way through. And then you could have it for dinner, like right away. We're just kind of crisping up the edges on the side so that they, they have a little bit of um, the crispiness and stuff and just a little bit more of the bite. So I would, so you could go up to, depending on your oven, that's what, you know, you always have to try it out a little bit too. You could go, you know, you can keep it on the, like the low side without the crispy. And that would probably be like 15, 20 minutes because that heats it all the way through. Or if you want it to be where it's almost like browned on the top, so nice caramelization, then you're probably closer to about 30 minutes. But like I said, check your ovens because it's going to depend whether you're using an electric oven or you're using a gas. I've always had electric almost my entire life. Um, so now we've got gas. So, you know, practicing a little bit on, on um, you know, the gas stove and make, you know, that gas stove and the gas ovens to see how long things are cooking because they, they're a little bit different. And then it's also depends on if you get a new stove or an old stove. You know, because sometimes you'll get stoves that will be like they burn everything on the right, right, Kelly, and everything not on the left, you know, type of thing. So you just have to kind of check it out. And I know there's all kinds of like um, different ways that you can check your oven temperature and move it around. Like there's a thermometer to see if your oven's equal. A lot of times they aren't. After a couple of years, they get the equal gets off. So anybody for anybody who's really pressed for time, how important is the saute? And I would say add it in. So if you've got, you know, let's, let's just say, you know, you've made, like you've been doing some meal prep or something, you've got your, your brown rice, but you don't have barley, so you could just, you know, or you have quinoa left over and you want to make something up and potatoes or mashed potatoes, just add it all in. Just chop it up or buy the stuff chopped and just start adding it in. I would say you don't have to do the sautéing at all. So it's just as good without doing all that. It's just, it was just more of just making sure that, you know, that there wasn't as much extra moisture. But if you're not going to cook those mushrooms and you put it in there, You'll be fine. They'll be great. Definitely press for time. But, you know, as long as you're like, you know, thinking about like if you've got different things that you've made, you know, you can put spinach in it. So you maybe you had a salad earlier. There's all those kind of things, onions, et cetera, that you can add in here and just make the burger like even more veggie, you know, forward. So that's all up to you. Great question. And I would say the beans, same thing. So if you want, you know, if you're just like, okay, I've got to get this on the stove and just then what you do is don't worry about the onions and the garlic and the, you know, the, uh, the bell peppers, just put everything together, put it on low and just let it simmer for a little bit. So if you just like, I just want to put it all together and then, you know, dinner's going to be ready in about an hour, just let it simmer, guarantee it'll be ready for you. So yeah, saute in there. It's part of the cooking, but there's a lot of times and stuff you can get away without the sauteing and you can just let it simmer. If you like barbecue sauce or honey mustard, mustard and ketchup, et cetera, what does it, does it make, does it work with this? Yes, we are actually going to add, um, so we have a sprouts, just a barbecue sauce, but it works with, it works with everything. So I would even, I've even done um, like A1 sauce, you know, so I've done like all kinds of different flavors. So if you want to just add some more mustard, so if you want to do like a plain burger and just do, you know, maybe you've got a plant-based mayo or you just want to do like mustard, lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, that kind of thing, it's wonderful. If you want to make it, you know, all kind of ooey gooey with barbecue sauce or you said like a honey mustard, which would be great because it's going to give it a little bit of that sweetness. Any of those flavors that you're looking for, they're all good. It's, there's nothing that ruins, let's put it this way, there's nothing that ruins the burger. So 
make it all your own and you know you could just leave the base of what we did here and then just you know have extra sauces like whatever you have if you had like a tahini sauce or anything like that just add that on when you're making the burger and then you'd have like different flavors that would be great you could even do like um um haven't done it with it but i think it would be good if you had a like a marinara sauce that was left over that would be another way you could also you could might just add that into it and make it almost like an italian burger but it's all like the veggies and everything else with it so um let's see i was going to grab some oh buns so you can use um when we get ready to pull these out here in just a few minutes when you can use like flatbread so um it's the tavern burgers and stuff are usually known they're used like you know pita pockets or some kind of a flatbread um you can do that jerry's he's kind of more like ah now nah, i like my he loves he loves the burger buns so he does he does the sprouted grain burger buns ezekiel so he buys these these are always in the freezer he buys them and there's six of them in here and he'll pull them out and then once we make the burger it's like this big so it's almost one of those ones you want to kind of put a steak knife in to hold it together but he loves these so you can get these yeah no oil or anything like that all the good ingredients it's like i'm looking at it. it's like all kinds of like lentils and all kinds of different things like barley etc they're really good um and you just keep them in the freezer pull them out let them set out for just a few minutes or if you're like running short on time pop them in the toaster they're really or like you've got a toaster oven or something pop them in there and they're really good because you get a little bit of toast on that so i'm going to grab two of them out and then the rest you know once you've got the two then throw the rest in the freezer and then just keep them around a lot of times though i'll do you know i'll be like eh too much bread don't feel like it so i will do it like a lettuce wrap so you know you can get like um romaine lettuce or you can get the um the iceberg great way to to use up iceberg lettuce and then you throw that together and then you've got you know you've got this like wrap or you can do like a pita bread or or just like completely plain add a little avocado you know all those kind of things like that and you've got a, a really good burger i have to i have to trim mine like that they are very thick yeah these the burgers um the bread can be very thick. And so there's a lot of times and stuff, what you'll see, uh, especially when they're doing like, you know, mofalettas and all that kind of stuff, they'll actually take and just pull out the bread that's here. So you just pull it out with your fingers. And then you can always keep that bread and make like uh, croutons or something like that for your salad. But that's a way to still get the, the bun and then your, the, your burger will fit in there, but you don't have as much bread. And there's a lot of times too, I agree, I agree, Mona, that there's sometimes this is too much for me. It's just like, yeah, no, I just don't feel like that much bread, but they're good. So like, a, yeah, healthy Jerry. I mean, Jerry, like I said, I will sometimes I'll come back, you know, from working or something like that. And he'll have a burger and it's like, he'll make it all up and it'll be like this thick and he's eating a burger. Let me check the, they're doing good. Just a couple more minutes on that. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out and get them ready because we need to be able to show you everything. All right. Time flies when you're having fun. It's amazing. There's like, you know, when you're, when you're working that you know, it's like an hour takes forever. It seems like it's 10 hours, but when I'm doing cooking classes, an hour, it's like, boom, seems like it's like, I seems like I've only been talking like 15 minutes. Scrape it. So you get all the, don't want any of the goodies to like the jalapenos and things like that. And I splattered when I show it to you here. A little bit of my scallions left over. I'll show you that here in a second. Let me just pop, I'm gonna pop one of these in the toaster. The other one I'll do in a few minutes. Grab the burgers out. nice and firm like i said if i left them in for probably about another 10 minutes they'd start getting brown um but there's but i wanted to show you guys in the class what they look like just grab something i can put this on real quick all right spatula and get the toasted All right, so bottom top, have to remember that. Let's do one of the big ones. 
That way it'll be easier to see top, <laughs> bottom. You can see it holds up really well. But you could mush it down if you wanted to. All right, then we've got great looking tomatoes, red onion. We have barbecue sauce. I'm gonna do a little shake of this real quick. I'm gonna actually do it along the edges because when I take a photo, I want it to show. Yum. Okay, beautiful tomato. Little bit of lettuce. Kind of put it around the edges like that. Then you got your red onion, yellow onion, white onion, doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab like a We're big onion fans. A little bit of lettuce in a little bit. And then, it's not really a steak knife, but it works. You could also do um, avocado, um, all the different flavors that you could do. Be really pretty. You just do. Pretty it up, and then it smells, oh my gosh, like the barbecue and the molasses and all that. So there is, let's see, I'm trying to find a pretty, we'll just do the, there we go. There is your veggie tavern burger and dinner, barbecue baked beans. I'll go down a little bit so you guys can see it. And see all that luscious barbecue sauce on the side? You could add some mustard in there, some ketchup, some honey, like honey mustard and barbecue sauce. Yum. That would be good. So there we go. Doesn't that look good, guys? That's the question. Looks yummy. Have you baked the beans in the oven? Yes, you could. You could do the same thing. So just if you wanted to just keep it out of, you know, keep it off of the, the stove, you could put it the same thing. Just put it in like one of your, you know, your Corel dishes or whatever you're using. Put it in there and just bake them through the, the oven stuff. They'll be even more like gooey and like the flavors and stuff will really melt together. So yeah, you can sure do that. Make it easy on yourself. I should have put a pickle on here because that's usually what they do too, like that and olives. But there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, Jerry is already drooling. I can see it right now. He's like, I want, can't wait for the burger. Um, and we're going to just, I had some extra potatoes left over. So I'm going to cut up some potatoes and then we got the baked beans. So, and some maybe corn on the cob. That's our dinner. So love you guys. Next week or two weeks from now, we're going to be doing um, lobster rolls. So if you guys are interested in lobster rolls and then a quinoa salad, join me in two weeks. Yeah, so it's plant-based lobster rolls. So yeah, Jerry's always, he's always whispering at me, plant-based. But you know everything, everything I say is always plant-based. So all right, well, have a great night, guys. Stay cool and wherever you're at. And hopefully you don't get a lot of rainstorms or hopefully you need rainstorms and you get them. But we'll talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bye.